Starship today is probably the most talked about rocket on the planet, and honestly, it's not without a reason. This thing is huge. It's the biggest, most powerful rocket ever developed. And on top of that, it's designed to reuse both stages. The booster comes back, the upper stage comes back. That's something we've literally never seen in the history of spaceflight. And somehow SpaceX made it real. Musk's original plan for Starship was simple but insane. Send humans to Mars, build bases, maybe even start a colony one day. But here's the funny thing about engineering. When you build something this great, it starts opening doors you didn't even know existed. You make a rocket for Mars and suddenly people say, what if we also use it for this? And now there is a serious idea floating around about using Starship itself as a space station. I know it sounds crazy at first. Why would anyone turn a rocket into a space station? But the more you look into it, the more it actually makes sense. So in this video, we're going to break down how this idea even came up and why it could work. Before we jump in, make sure to subscribe to the channel so you don't miss future videos. It really helps us out. So first, let's talk about why people are even suggesting this in the first place. Starship isn't just a rocket. It's basically a giant stainless steel building that happens to fly. The inside volume is over 1,000 cubic meters. That's more than the entire pressurized volume of the International Space Station, which took 10 years and over 30 launches to assemble. Starship gives you that volume in one shot. And that's when people started saying, hold on, if one starship has the same interior space as an entire space station, why not just turn one starship into a station instead of building a hundred little modules? And honestly, Liz, it's a fair question. You see, NASA is in a tough spot right now. The ISS is aging much faster than people expected, and it's officially planned to retire around 2030. That sounds far away, but in space program time, that's basically tomorrow. We're talking about only four years left before NASA loses the only major U.S.-led space station in orbit. And the problem is, NASA still doesn't have a replacement ready. There's no new station built, no final design flying, and none of the commercial stations under are anywhere close to operational. Most of them are still just prototypes. Meanwhile, China is moving fast with its own space station, Tiangong. And this is where things get awkward. Tiangong is newer, cleaner, and uses updated tech. It launched its first modules in 2021 and already has modern life support systems and a structure designed for future expansion. China is also planning to add more modules. This is why the Starship station idea suddenly starts to look very appealing. Starship already exists. It's flying. Instead of waiting until the 2030s for a new dedicated station, NASA could potentially get a massive stainless steel orbital outpost from a vehicle SpaceX is already building. You just launch one starship, put it into orbit, and boom, you have a space station with more room than anything humans have ever built up there. And because it's fully reusable, you can also upgrade the inside over time. And here's something even crazier. You could park multiple starships next to each other, dock them together, and suddenly you have a mega station. You could set up a starship for astronomy, another for microgravity research, another for tourism, another for manufacturing. It becomes modular without the insane cost of building separate modules. What's funny is that Starship wasn't even designed to be a space station, but in some ways it is better than the stations we already have. And that's because of the basic materials it's built from. The ISS is mostly made of aluminum. It's light, but it doesn't handle space very well. Every 90 minutes, the station goes from burning sunlight to freezing darkness, and aluminum expands and shrinks a lot. Over the years, that creates stress and tiny cracks. It also doesn't block radiation very well, so astronauts need extra shielding and special safe zones during solar storms. Starship is different. It's built from stainless steel, and that alone gives it a massive advantage. Steel handles extreme temperatures way better. It can survive everything from minus 150 degrees Celsius to over 800 degrees Celsius without weakening. It barely expands or contracts, so it's far more durable over long periods in orbit. Steel is also tougher. Tiny pieces of space debris traveling insanely fast can punch through aluminum, but steel can take a hit and keep the structure safe. 
for a long-term station with people living inside it, that's a huge deal. And when it comes to radiation, steel naturally blocks more of it than aluminum. So just by using a steel hull, Starship already gives astronauts better protection before adding any extra shielding. And what makes this whole thing even more interesting is that Starship is still in development. SpaceX haven't said, okay, this is the final version. Instead, they keep upgrading the rocket. Most rockets take 10 to 20 years for one major upgrade. Starships get major upgrades every few months. If you look back at the first full Starship stacks, the early versions that flew on Flight 1 and Flight 2 were already around 120 meters tall. But the new versions, especially the ones being prepared now for Flight 12 and beyond, are even taller. SpaceX has been increasing the length of the tanks and strengthening the structure. Musk already confirmed that the newer builds will be closer to 125 or even 130 meters tall. That means more fuel and more payload. And while all this is happening, SpaceX has already conducted 11 full orbital flight tests. And the progress from Flight 1 to Flight 11 is insane. In the early flights, Starship barely survived a few minutes after liftoff. Now it's surviving re-entry, performing controlled descents, and landing attempts. The booster went from simple ocean splashdowns to actually being caught by the Mechazilla Tower. And not just once, they've managed to catch a falling 70-meter-tall booster three different times. That's something no one in the history of rockets has even attempted, let alone succeeded at. Every flight is basically a new version of the rocket. Even the frickin' flight software improves from launch to launch. And you can always tell when SpaceX upgrades something, because the next flight suddenly performs a lot better than the last. But the biggest improvements are actually happening in the engines. The early orbital flights used older Raptor 2 engines, producing around 230 tons of thrust. They were powerful, but they were complicated, expensive, and required constant tuning. The Raptor 3 engines that SpaceX is using now are a huge step up. They're crossing 285 to 300 tons of thrust. They have cleaner plumbing, stronger chamber walls, and more stable combustion. A single new Raptor engine is almost powerful enough to replace entire booster clusters from rockets built in the two decades ago. And because they're simpler, SpaceX can produce them way faster and for way less money. And now SpaceX is already developing the next version. Raptor 4. Raptor 4 is expected to push 310 tons of thrust with higher chamber pressure. Early test units are already firing at McGregor, and production hardware is moving through internal qualification. If everything stays on schedule, the first Starship to fly with Raptor 4 will likely appear around 2026 or 2027. After that, SpaceX plans to phase out Raptor 2 and Raptor 3 entirely, so the entire fleet uses the same standard engine, which is critical when you're trying to build dozens of ships per year. That's it for this one. Thanks for watching and see you in the next video.